The topic of this video is identifying polynomial functions and their degree. Let's look at a problem. Is the function a polynomial? If so, state its degree. If not, why? Our function is g of x equals 8 times parenthesis x minus 4 close parenthesis squared times parenthesis x squared plus 6 close parenthesis. Okay, so before we solve this problem, there's a couple of things that I would like to share with you. First of all, there's two ways to solve this problem. One of them is the long brute force way, and the other uses this handy theorem. Let's talk about the brute force way and why we're not going to do it that way. One way to solve this problem would be to take all of these things and multiply them out. So for example, this exponent of two means we have to multiply the x minus four times another x minus four. So you can do the eight times the x minus four with the distributive property, take that result and multiply it by the other x minus 4 with FOIL, and then take that result and multiply it by the x squared plus 6 using the box method for multiplying polynomials. That would take quite a long time. A much easier and much simpler way to approach this problem is to use this theorem. Let's read it. The product of two or more polynomials is also a polynomial. Its degree is the sum of the degrees of the polynomials being multiplied. This theorem says if we identify that our function is just a bunch of things being multiplied, if we can show that each little thing is a polynomial, then the whole thing is a polynomial. So let's write it in that form. g of x is equal to 8 times the first x minus 4 times the second x minus 4 times the x squared plus 6. If we can show that each of these four factors is a polynomial, then by this theorem, g of x is a polynomial. As a reminder, I have the definition of a polynomial down here. If you can take what you have and rewrite it to be in this form, then it is a polynomial. So let's start with the first one, which is this x minus 4. You can rewrite x minus 4 by swapping the order of the terms. The 4 is negative, so if we move that up to the front, then this would be negative 4 plus x, and the coefficient of x is 1. So that tells me if I put a negative 4 in the first box, a 1 in the second box, and a 0 in every box thereafter, then I have created a polynomial. Negative 4 plus 1x is the same as x minus 4. Therefore, this is a polynomial. And of course, if x minus 4 is a polynomial, then this other x minus 4 is also a polynomial. The degree is the highest exponent of x needed to write it, which would be x to the first power. So this is yes, degree 1, and yes, degree 1. Okay, let's move on to our next term, x squared plus 6. Our next factor, excuse me. All right, x squared plus 6. First, swap the order of the terms. So 6 plus x squared. And let's see if we can put this in polynomial form. So what term has no variable? 6, that goes in the first box. What term has just x as its variable? None. This is an x squared. Those are different, so I'd have to put a 0 in this box. What term has x squared? Well, it's this x squared with a coefficient of 1, so I put a 1 in the box. 6, 0, and 1 are all real numbers. Therefore, yes, this is a polynomial. And its degree is the highest exponent of x, which is 2. All right, only one left to go, which is this number 8. All right, so is 8 a polynomial? The answer may surprise you. 8 is a polynomial. Even though it's just a single number, it meets the definition of a polynomial. It can be written in this form. You put an 8 in the first box, and then a 0 in every box after it, and therefore it meets the definition. Now, this can be frustrating for students, and I do understand their frustration. You've probably heard the term monomial, and now you've, or we're talking about polynomial. Polynomial, poly, the root word poly meaning many. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, polynomial is a generic term that covers monomials as well as polynomials with more than one term. So eight is a polynomial, even though it only has one term. So yes, polynomial. Interestingly, the degree is zero. If you look at it, we have x to the third, x to the two, x to the one, and no x at all, so this is x to the 0, therefore the degree is 0. Okay, so we've determined that each factor that we would have to multiply to create g of x is a polynomial. So by this theorem, 
g of x must be a polynomial. g of x is a polynomial. And its degree is the sum of the degrees of the individual little polynomials that are being multiplied. So I add 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2, and I get 4. g of x is a polynomial, and its degree is 4. Remember this theorem, it's a big time saver.